Hey guys, well, it's Nate called Nate here, and today I'm doing overrated or underrated for movies from the 1950s. Let me get my hat straight. First off, I don't want to waste any time. Go and watch Rear Window and 12 Angry Men. You was going to say those are underrated, so let's get those out of the way right now. Uh, okay, sure. Really? Well, I mean, I, I think it just depends on what community you're talking about. If you're talking about people who like movies, then those get all the respect in the world. But people who don't watch movies, then it's underrated because nobody's going to go back and watch those. But I just figured you'd say underrated for both. Yeah. Old Yellow. Uh, Old Yeller is overrated as fuck. I, thankfully the dog doesn't talk. I still just hate movies about, like, with live animals in them. Um, and if I want to cry over a dog, to me, they're, I, I'm gonna, although the film adaptation of Where the Red Fern Grows is not good in terms of sad dog movies, or sad dog stories, period, Where the Red Fern Grow, Grows is the best. You will not get better than that. Screw Old Yeller. I don't like that book. I don't like that movie. Seven Samurai. Uh, Seven Samurai. I gotta say perfectly rated. I mean, uh, Kurosawa, he makes mad films. I don't make films, but if I did, they'd have a samurai. If you get that reference, then you're freaking awesome. Uh, but yeah, that dude gets a lot of respect for what he did for filmmaking, especially what he did for bringing foreign films and uh, making them popular. Because even today, a lot of people who live in America don't really pay a lot of attention to films that are made in foreign countries, which is silly because they miss out on some of the best films that are ever made because they don't want to read subtitles. But uh, Seven Samurai is definitely one of like the three great films that Kurosawa made. So I'm going to say underrated. Top five. Huh? Top five all time. Top five movies of all time, period, ever. That's what people say. Uh, Yeah, that's tough. <clears throat> I personally hate the like best movie of all time thing because it's it's so subjective. But I'll say sure. I mean, I'm not I'm not gonna argue it. I mean, it's an incredibly well made movie. It is very good. It is engaging. Excellent story. Like it is is excellent. So why not top five? One of the best five movies ever made. Rio Bravo. Rio Bravo. Um. Uh, yeah, I was fine. I think it's perfectly rated. I don't, uh, Rio Bravo is, I've seen it once. I'll probably never watch Rio Bravo again. It was a good movie. I really enjoyed it, but I don't feel like anyone is out here touting it as a seven samurai or a citizen cane or anything like that. So perfectly rated. Do you think just because culturally where we are now that Westerns are just slopped on underrated as a genre? Yeah, so it's tough because most of the time when a Western comes out now, it is like a real Western. It's usually uh, either very successful, and if it's not like by successful, I mean like uh, if it's on Netflix, it gets a ton of views. If it's in the theater, it tends to actually make money. Um, and they are also generally critically well-received, so... It's tough to say that Westerns are slept on because we don't really get that many of them anymore. But when we do get them, they tend to be really good. And even like neo-Westerns, like you could almost describe No Country as like a uh, neo-Western. Or, um, uh, man. There uh, Will Be Blood. There Will Be Blood, neo-Western. Uh, dang, what's the one about uh, Ben Foster and Chris Pine? They rob banks. Hell or High Water. Hell or High Water, neo-Western. Very good. But then you got your, you know... Django, which is a very updated version of a classic Western. Uh, we had The Harder They Fall. That was the name of it. Very Django-like in a lot of people's... Well, it is. It's a very Django-like movie. Some people like it way more than Django. It was incredibly popular, right? So, Westerns are still doing really good. We just don't, like... We're not getting them left and right like we were in the 50s and 60s. So, I don't think they're slept on. I think... I think superhero movies should follow what westerns are doing now and go back to just giving me 
one or two really good superhero movies every two years, but that's not going to happen. I know you've seen this movie because it is the first Star Wars movie, and it is Bridge of the River Kauai. <laughs> um, it is a Star Wars movie because Ben Kenobi, after what happened at 3, he says, beam me up, Scotty, and he goes, and he goes to Earth and joins the U.S. Army. Yeah. Uh, Bridge of the River Kwai, excellent movie. It's really, really good. Um, one of the best war movies ever, in my opinion. But I gotta say, perfectly rated because I think people give it those props. So, perfectly rated. The worst movie I've written down on this Viagra note card I have right now. Oh, nice. And it is Sunset Boulevard. You need that. I do not. <laughs> I'm younger than you, bitch. <laughs> hey, listen. ED affects men of all ages. You don't have to be ashamed of it. Like, don't assume my gender. It's really nice Just that they. Tell me over and over. Really nice they gave you a free notepad with your subscription. I took this from my dad. Um, you don't have one. Um, I took this from Joe. <laughs> oh, that's gross. Now, anyways, um, <laughs> you said Sunset Boulevard. Yeah, that trash ass movie. I don't think it's trash. I, and it's funny because I don't necessarily think that everyone thinks that movie is trash, but he thinks it's trash, so I'm going to say underrated because it's not trash. I really like Sunset Boulevard. You're right, it's not trash. It's hot garbage. Next, we have the original. You hate drug movies. This is the original drug movie, Alice in Wonderland. Um, The first movie to be adopted by the Stoners. Is it? Yeah, dude. Woodstock, this is what they watched. Well, yeah, that's true. Uh, oh, man, that's really tough because it, it does have this niche thing now. But now anytime I ever see anything about Alice in Wonderland that is in relation to a movie and not like someone wearing like a Cheshire hat or a Cheshire cat like flat bill or something like that. Um, it's always in relation to the, the live action one because it has also found its weird little cult following now. Uh, so, I'm going to say Alice in Wonderland, underrated. That movie is incredibly strange and weird. I love that it came out in the 1950s, because it is so off the beaten path. But, in the 1950s, animation was just such a strictly, like, children's uh, genre. Like, there were no adults out here talking about how excited they are about the next Pixar movie animation was just for kids so people didn't care how weird and trippy it was because it was just this big fairy tale thing for children but so i'm going to say it's underrated just because of that a movie that i loved when i first saw it then i recently watched it and i thought the main character looked kind of stupid at a certain point and it made the film dated in my opinion so i'm curious to see what you're going to say about vertigo um huh like how come you don't know that's that hair like, come on now. That's interesting. You're a detective. Uh. And you can't see that that's the same girl? Yeah, I think it's a bad take. I think it's... Uh, the movie came out in the 50s. You have to... Yeah, maybe I was in a bad mood. I yeah, don't know. Maybe that's why you don't like the third man either. But... Because I think it kind of suffers from that same... Like, just when it came out. Nah, but, I didn't feel like it was dated. I just wasn't invested. Yeah. Uh, Vertigo... Uh, it depends on the day on whether or not I think Vertigo is overrated or underrated because I think Vertigo is better than Rear Window just by a little bit. Uh, but some people put Rear Window over Vertigo and in those situations I'm going to say Vertigo is underrated because it should be above Rear Window. But some people put Vertigo over Rear Window and on those days it's perfectly rated. So a lot of people still haven't seen it. So ultimately I'm going to say underrated. Go watch Hitchcock movies. That man is an incredible filmmaker uh, and... It is worth watching his movies, especially those two. I mean, he make, he has plenty of excellent movies, but uh, like Psycho, Rear Window, Vertigo, go watch those three movies. It's absolutely worth it. Night of the Hunter. <laughs> uh, that one's really tough because I don't I don't really know what the uh, wider cultural view of Night of the Hunter is. I just watched it with you, and we. I would say we felt vastly different about it. I thought it was a good movie. You thought it was an excellent movie. So when it came out, it was so critically hated that yeah. the director never made another movie again. Well, then I'm going to say... And then over time, it found success. Well, well see, that's also tough because 
I would say that makes it underrated because the movie definitely is not bad like that. Um, but I don't know. I'm just going to call it perfectly rated. I think that movie is considered to be a very well-made movie. Uh, now, Robert Mitchum was an incredible actor. He deserves all the props that he ever got. He's very good. I don't really dig that movie a ton, personally. Strange Wang digs that movie a lot. So I'm just going to call it perfectly rated. Here at Cinematopical, we're unfortunately poor. And this money you see on screen, that's CGI. That's not real money. Because, again, we're poor. So if you want to click in the add eye in the corner, that video is monetized. And we can make money off it. So please go watch it. And if you click an ad, we make more money. And if you really want to help, there's the thanks button right there below this video. 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. I've never seen it. You've never seen 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea? No, I've read it. A movie that is now canceled, Peter Pan. Oh, because of the Red Man yeah. thing? Yeah. Um... Yeah, I mean, uh, I think Peter Pan's perfectly rated. Like, people still quote Peter Pan all the time. Um, yeah, that one sequence was really, really... You know, I understand why it's offensive. It is what it is. Personally, if you're if you're going to send me to go watch a Peter Pan movie, I'm going to pick Hook every single day. It's just... it. I understand that a lot of people don't think it's necessarily a great movie, but it fell right in my wheelhouse. I was a kid when it came out. Fucking love Hook. I'm going to watch that over the OG Peter Pan any day of the week. But I like Peter Pan in general. I like the whimsicalness of it. Uh, I like all the fan theories about it. Like, are the kids dead? Is Peter Pan an angel of death? What does this mean? What does that mean? I don't know. You watch the movie, you find out. But Peter Pan still gets talked about a lot, so I'm going to say perfectly rated. Last movie on the list. Singing in the Rain. Singing in the Rain? Uh... <sighs> I think I'm going to go with Alex the largest favorite song. So, I'm curious. Yeah, right. I mean, well, my heart's torn because it's like, I feel like Singing in the Rain gets a lot of props. As I've said on the ch our channel many times before and in conversations with the strangest of wings, it annoys me that the film is most known for that one specific song. Uh, there's so much more to that movie than that. That movie is incredible. I love it. Uh but also Singing in the Rain still gets talked about all the time. It still gets its props. Um, and it also is fairly consistently regarded as, if not the, one of the top five best musicals, musicals of all time, which I agree with. It pops up on like, if you know, if you stretch out to like the, one, the 150 best movies of all time, Singing in the Rain pops up on those lists all the time, which means people are giving it props outside of the one song sequence that everybody knows it for. So I got to say perfectly rated, even though I wish people would pay a little bit more attention to it outside of Homeboy legitimately singing in the rain. But let me know if you think I got any wrong or right down in the comment section below. What do you think is overrated or underrated, specifically from the 50s decade? Come back. Next time, for the 60s, like, comment, and subscribe. It's not a game, it's a red skin.